Hi, and welcome to your next lecture in Computer Science for Everyone. We're moving into the next section, and here we're going to talk about collections. So, so far we have seen how we can define a variable, like so. For example, an integer, x, that has the value 5, a double called temp that has 15.6, or a string or phrase with the value hello. So we can create single variables with a single value. A collection is not a single value, but a group of values, or rather a collection of values that all have the same name. Let's see how these would be created first, and then more benefits they give us. So in here we have int, then two square brackets, and then I've called it x array instead of just x. Uh, although we can name it whatever we want, of course. And then between two curly braces, I have a group of comma separated values. So in here, x array as a variable stores the values 5, 6, 7, 10, and 3. So all of those five values are stored inside x array. Similarly, for temp array, which could be an array of temperatures, for example, it has the values 15.6, 33.1, and 150.7. And similarly, the string array phrases has the two phrases or two words, hello and bye. So we can create array variables with given values. And there are also other forms of creating array variables where we don't specify the value straight off the bat. And we will see how these are done later on. So why do we use arrays? The idea is that whereas one variable will only let us store one value with one name, an array lets us store a group of values all with one name, so we can store related values in the same array. We will see what this impacts when we start programming, because theoretically it is difficult to explain. Empty arrays can also be created. For example, here, an int and then two square brackets, x array equals a new int with a 5 between the square brackets. And here we're creating an array with 5 slots, uh, and all of them are 0. So here it would be the same thing as doing int x array with the two square brackets, equals, and then between curly braces, 5 zeros. So in these cases, we're creating a 5 slot integer array that's empty, a three slot double array that doesn't have it, and like all the values are zero, and a two slot string array that are all empty as well. So we can create array variables with default values, and these values are usually zero or 0, 0.0 or an empty string or something along those lines. So, how can we modify array values? The first thing we're going to do is create the array variable with the default values, and here we have three 0, 0.0 values in our temps array. And then we're going to change the first element of this array. The first position of an array is position 0. We start counting from 0 in computing. So here, the 0th element, or the first element of the array, we're going to change its value from 0, 0.0 to 14.2. And then we're going to change the second position, or index 1, to hold the value 66.3. And finally, we're going to change the third position, or index 2, to contain the value minus 56.1. If we try doing the same for position 3, or rather index 3, position 4, it would be invalid and we would get an error because we've created an array that has three slots. And position 3 would be the fourth slot. And obviously, our array doesn't have that much size. So this is one of the caveats that arrays have. Once an array has been declared, its elements can be modified, but its size cannot be changed. So an array with three elements or five elements cannot have six or four elements, for example. So you cannot change the number of elements that are in an array after you have created the array. This is unlike array lists, where the size can be altered dynamically. 
and this is what we're going to look at in the next lecture. However, in the very next video we're going to uh, have a programming exercise where we will experiment around with arrays. So stay tuned and let's go to the next one.